Hi, uh, my name is Mike Dodge. I'm from Facebook. Um, I'm on the client platform engineering team. We do all of the uh, client administration for Facebook, so that's like laptops, phones, everything. Um, cool. If you haven't seen any of my talks before, um, let me just give you a quick rundown. We have a very unique culture. None of our tools can ever be perceived as friction or as blockers because people will remove them. So it's an interesting challenge and we have to be extremely flexible and that's actually why we ended up choosing Chef. Um, Chef is awesome. You can change any facet of Chef if you really need to, but just as a configuration management tool goes, it's extremely flexible. So I'm not here to sell you on configuration management. If you're here, I assume you probably already know why configuration management's awesome. Um, <laughs> in particular, I believe all the work that we've put in uh, for our chef has made it the best, or is the best configuration management for OS X, and we'll go over some of the reasons why. But yeah, this is it, uh, advanced chef made easy. And let me just start off by saying my team and Facebook as a whole like loves Chef. Um, we've been able to do everything we possibly need with Chef. If you saw Nate's talk recently, he, he went into how one of our goals is to, to improve the out-of-the-box experience with Chef uh, for OS X. And then uh, last year, you may have remembered that I was telling you how Chef was not all sunshine and rainbows. And that was true. There was a lot of stuff that, that needed to be worked on as of last year, but we've done a lot of work since then. And now it, it definitely is sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> and with all the stuff that you're about to see today, I would even say that there's unicorns in there too. Um, so you know, what, what work did we do? Why is it so good? Well, um, we spent a lot of work getting native uh, OS 10 specific resource and providers built into Chef. One of them is LaunchD. You can actually manage LaunchD natively out of the box with Chef now. Uh, profile provider, so you can do the same with uh, OS X profiles natively in Chef. Uh, both of which I'm extremely proud to say you do not need to touch a plist in order to do either of those two things anymore. So I, I particularly hate plists. Um, we also had several 10.11 uh, fixes well before 10.11 was actually released. And uh, I think we beat other CMs to a day one release by like a month. But yeah, so with all that work, um, Chef is, in my opinion, the best uh, CM for OS X. Done. The end, right? Well, no, not, not really. There's, there's at least still one other issue. Um, but this, to be fair, has nothing to do with Chef as so much as it is with all configuration management tools. Um, to take from our guys in prod, they basically are, are talk about uh, item potency of individual records versus uh, systems. So if you think about it, all configuration management tools, they manage individual settings, not entire systems. And what I mean by that is like, uh, it doesn't, they manage individual launch daemons and not launch D as a whole. So we'll go into why that sucks, but Again, it manages individual launch daemons, not all of launch D. So think of that as we go through this next example that I'm gonna give you. So this is today how you would actually write chef code to um, d deploy a new launch daemon in your fleet. But um, just out of hands, how many people are running CM in their environment, like a configuration management tool? Okay, so for some of you guys, you'll, you'll probably identify what the problem is uh, pretty quickly. But we write this fancy code, hopefully you can see it, but it's okay. So basically, the first line is a, the LaunchD resource. You're saying expressing LaunchD, and you're saying install the LaunchD with this label, which is you know com.facebook.sumscript, cool. Uh, then the rest of the or properties that we're gonna provide are just the standard key value pairs you'd normally see in a LaunchD. So first one, program, then go do some script. Calendar interval, and then you give it a dictionary with key value pairs of weekday, seven, which means you know Sunday, 10 a.m., and then a timeout of five minutes or 300 seconds. And by default, you actually don't have to pass it the, uh, um, the action block or this next line. Oh, did the 
Okay, so yeah, you don't have to pass it the action line. Um, it will just uh, automatically create the LaunchD on your behalf. But if you wanted it to enable it and ensure that it's uh, in an enabled state at any given time, you just say action uh, enabled. Okay, so life is good. You have your fancy launch daemon on all of your machines. And then a um, couple weeks go by and you realize that you screwed up, that you accidentally misspelled Facebook. There's three O's instead of two O's. That's pretty embarrassing. <clears throat> so the easy solution would just be to update the resource and say no longer have three O's, have two O's because it's Facebook, not Facebook. Okay. And now everything's right with the world, right? Nope. There's a, a major problem. Does uh, anyone un can guess what, what the problem is? Exactly. So we told LaunchD to create a, a launch daemon with three O's. Then we told it to create a launch daemon with two O's, but we never told it to clean up the other one that had three O's. And so there's a few solutions to this. One of them is being you can end up writing code that looks like this, which will have launch D, Facebook, you know, the label, the old one with three O's, action delete, and then another one representing the new one that you want on disk, and then you're good. And of course, you can put a comment like that up at the top that says, please remove after a certain date, but that's crappy. No one's gonna go and actually clean up this code. And then when is the actually appropriate time to clean it up? Most of our clients are moving, so they, you know, people stick a laptop in a, in a drawer, or maybe they're on vacation or whatever. So when, when, when is the appropriate time to remove this code? More than likely, it may be never. You may actually have to have this, this you know, three-line block in there to clean up that one mistake that you made indefinitely, or at least for a really long time until you're ensured that it's gone. So I've described the problem. That's in managing individual LaunchDs, not being able to re represent all of what LaunchD is as a service. So we actually wrote a wrapper called CPE LaunchD, which is um, a wrapper around the native resource and provider uh, that represents all of LaunchD. So we're gonna go into a quick example of this. This is a, the, the new way of creating a LaunchD if you use our cookbook, which is um, basically this one uh, dictionary or hash, Ruby hash, called CPE LaunchD. You're not telling it uh, what to do yet, this is just like the replacement of the resource call. So it says CPE LaunchD, and this represents all of the LaunchDs that are on disk that you care about. You give it a key of the, the label you want, and then you give it a, a, a value of the hash that, that represents that launch daemon. So now, because you added it to, di, uh, to this array, it's automatically gonna create and enable a LaunchD that represents this hash and make sure that it's in that state at any given time. And some wins of this is, of course, when I make a change for the weekday from seven to six, it's automatically gonna load the new launch daemon in the correct state without me actually having to do any code cleanup or anything like that. So launch D, CPE launch D hash now represents all the launch daemons I want on disk. So when I go and delete this code, it's automatically gonna go delete and disable the launch D on disk and now I don't have to actually have cleanup code to go remove stuff because I'm actually expressing how I want all of LaunchD to look, not individual launch daemons. So we took that concept and re really ran with it. We have plenty of examples. The other one that we actually use uh, is profiles. We use this quite a bit. So instead of using the native uh, profile provider, this wrapper now represents all the profiles that I want on disk. Again, it's very similar. We're going to... Uh, take this CPE profiles um, dictionary, and then for each key value pair should represent a profile on disk. So this is the password, uh, yeah, the password profile that we push out. Then um, you give it the hash key value pairs of what the, what's in the profile. And because it's again just a, a hash that represents all of CPE profiles, or all of the profiles on disk, you can clean it up very easily. Let's say I wanted to change my organization payload name from Facebook to FB. It's automatically gonna handle all the work for you. It's going to uh, validate whether or not that one is loaded. If not, load the new one. 
And someday, when I'm ready, if I actually remove that code, it's actually just going to remove it, remove it from the. Uh, Anything? Screen, yeah. Sorry, man. I can see it. Okay. <laughs> but if is there a way can you convert the color by any chance, or maybe even just brightness? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Just go crazy on that. Or color. Oh yeah. What's the keyboard shortcut for that? Control A. Control. Command. Okay. All right. Let's go do it. Cool. Thank you very much. Man. No problem. Thank you. All right. This is the second time I've had color problems on this projector. All right. OK. Uh, accessibility. Command. Option. Where? Uh -huh. Oh, invert colors. There we go. Oh, man. All right. Oh. Oh. All right. That chef logo looks pretty cool in that color. Got this. Yeah. All right, let's try to skip through some of this. Okay. Yeah, that looks not, not bad. Okay. So, <laughs> it actually doesn't look that bad in this color scheme. Okay. So, just so you guys can see the launch the examples real quick, we'll go through them. Is that? Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's how you do launch these before. But then, you, yeah, I misspelled Facebook. <laughs> And then, and then look, three L's, two L's, yeah, okay, nope. And then, uh, yeah, so yeah, this is what you would typically see if you had to actually clean up that code, and then that sucks, because no one will do that, and then when's the appropriate time, cool. And then uh, here's the example of the new stuff. So it actually looks very similar to the, the previous one, except now you're using CPE LaunchD as a representation of all of LaunchD instead of just the individual resource call for that one. So cool, we're in the profiles example now. Um, yeah, so now managing profiles is super easy when you can just use a, a hash instead of like actually building them and building them dynamically per client instead of individual ones. Okay, so let's just do this real quick. Um, because now we're going to go back to that for a little while. OK. So when I described um, LaunchD and Profiles, it was an API. And, and what does that mean? Uh, when you, whenever you build a cookbook, there's three phases that those cookbooks come into play for APIs. Um, now, just remember, this is a drastic oversimplification of compile time versus runtime for the, the entire chef run. But these are the three stages you need to care about. Attributes, recipes, resources. So you'll have a chef run list of, that consists of like 10 cookbooks. And each of these will get processed, these components from those cookbooks, in that order. OK, so we're going to go over that a little bit. So attributes come first. And this is where you establish your API and uh, make it very uh, easy to understand what parts of this cookbook you can actually do overrides on. So an example of this is like idle time. Um, idle time for this particular one, let's pretend it's a screensaver idle time. I'm going to establish that I want it to be three, 300 seconds inside of my attributes file of a, of a given cookbook. Then in any recipe in my run list that gets ran, it can override that default. So conditionally, I found out he's an engineer, so he gets 600. But then he wrote his own custom override, and he wanted it to be 400. So it's, by the time it gets to the resource that's actually responsible for laying down that configuration, it'll get the last write of that, uh, of that value. And that's essentially how all of this stuff works. And we're going to go into a deep dive of that right now. So like, how do Chef APIs work? Cool. This will be fun. 
doing this the whole time. Okay. Um, cool. So the next one. This is uh, an example of our Bluetooth cookbook. Um, in the attributes file for the default.rb, we have um, two values that you can uh, provide and as an override, Bluetooth auto C keyboard and Bluetooth auto C pointing device. The default for us is nil because we don't actually want this to be turned off on our entire fleet. But on individual machines, conditionally, we can set those two values from nil to zero. And now those two settings will be used to generate a profile to disable Bluetooth on that machine. So we'll, we'll show that. OK, you can't see that. But we're going to zoom in anyway. This is essentially the, the recipe uh, for this, uh, this cookbook. And then we zoom in on the resource that is actually the one doing all the work. It's just a Ruby block. And all it's going to do is look at the uh, Bluetooth preferences that we, we uh, expose in the API. And it's going to reject any of the values that are nil. So in this particular case, we only showed two of the possible options that we, we wanted people to, to use. But because we're taking the entire namespace of Bluetooth, any value that you gave me that was non-nil will get added to this list of BT prefs. Now, if B2 prefs after that, that line is done, it's empty, and we, we're just we're done. Um, but if it did actually have values when, it uh, when we've iterated over all of them, we're actually going to generate a profile and add it to CPE profiles with the prefix that we've defined earlier based on our company, Bluetooth. And then when we get down to the actual MCX uh, settings, it's basically just taking all of the non-nil values that you pass to it. And so now we just dynamically generated a profile for that machine based on attributes that were conditional throughout our run list. And we'll go into like how to use it. This is more how to set one up. OK. So <laughs> API, all the things in a weird color. Um, so let me, um, so this is a list of all the APIs, just not all, but a, a quick rundown of all the a, uh, APIs that we've open sourced. And, or will open source, and um, all the ones that we've built in the house. So here's a screensaver idle time. You can say 600 as a default, but anyone can come by and update that value. And they don't have to understand how to create a profile or any of the inner workings of Chef. They can literally just set that value to whatever meets their needs. Uh, same for the password delay. It's by default one second, but if they wanted it to be 5 or 10 or whatever, they could just change that. So this is the system paths. Uh, or like paths D, you can append to that in any cookbook by just appending to that array. And again, we all know how to do this, but maybe individuals might not. And our entire goal was to make sure that other people started pushing uh, client configurations for us. So exposing all of these really easy helpers makes it really easy. So the Bluetooth one that we already went over, um, how to set Bluetooth. This one is um, a fun one. You can. Um, arbitrarily add to the XE host file for any uh, key value pair. So in this particular case, we're, we're, we're pointing a, a domain to 127.0.0.1. Uh, one. <laughs> one. Um, and in this particular case, um, it's the energy settings for C, uh, the power management. And in that key, it's the AC power. And you can pass it any valid key with the, the value that you want, and it'll automatically generate the profile for you. Um, and then the, <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> I'm going to do all of mine in, inverted now. Um, so monkey and chef is one of my, my, my near and dear to my heart. Uh, yeah, it's a match made in, in heaven right there. Okay. So let's, let's talk about how easy it is now to use chef with monkey or monkey with chef. <clears throat> so to install monkey, you literally just come by and say CPE monkey install equals true, and we will handle the installation for Monkey. Um, then you can come by and say configure equals true, and we're going to configure it. But of course, my Monkey configuration is not going to mean your Monkey configuration. So what are the differences? You can override any default Monkey settings just by saying CPE Monkey, preferences, and then the preference key value pairs that, that you are familiar with if you use Monkey. So software repo URL is this 
URL, which is my company. And then the, do I want it to install Apple updates? True. So now instead of having to deal with plists, you can literally just do key value pairs. Now, you can also do this all conditionally too. So if you wanted a, per, a certain percent of your fleet to go to one monkey repo and another to go to your other one, you would just be able to do all that conditional logic right there. Um, cool. Then this is, this is the thing that I'm particularly ha happy about. It's managing a monkey local only manifest with Chef. So basically all I'm doing is creating a list, Dropbox, Google, Chrome, iTerm, and for each of those I'm adding them to the manage installs list for that individual machine. It makes managing uh, all the monkey installs really nice. Cool. So putting it all together, how, how does this actually work? Imagine you had a company default settings uh, in your cookbook. At the very early of the run, you can just say my organization equals my company. Uh, what do I want all my launch D prefixes and profiles to be prefixed with? We chose com.mycompany.chef right there. Um, then here's my monkey uh, parameters. So yes, I want it to install. Yes, I want it to configure. Here's my, my URL. Here's my yes, I want it to be installed. And you can imagine all the monkey preferences that you normally add. Now, here's my screensaver settings for everyone. Here's my default manage installs list. I want everyone to have Chrome. But then this is where all the magic happens right here at the very bottom of the last line, which is kind of cut off. But it says, include recipe for node department. So imagine you, you already wrote the code, and you can identify which person is logged into each machine. And then, cool, now you know what, who they are, which department are they. Maybe you have an internal API, or maybe you're using LD, uh, sorry, AD. But now you're just going to automatically include a recipe called department. So now that we have that, let's look at what those, those recipes could include now. Um, you could have a sales.rb uh, recipe or cookbook. And for the salespeople, you can very easily see the only thing that's different for them versus the company defaults is the fact that they get the screensaver idle time of 300 instead of 600. And the managed installs also includes Excel because they do you know, charts and graphs and stuff. Okay, but for engineers, they need uh, an idle time of 1,200 for whatever reason, or ask for password zero, and they're all Vim users, so they need iTerm. And it's and it's now you're not describing um, what everyone gets. You're 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 saying in addition to what everyone gets, here's an override. But if you take this much further and you think about not just departments, but someone touched a file, so now they're an Android developer. Someone um, is joined a Facebook group or an AD group, and you can query that on the client. So you can conditionally add them to you know, engineering or sales or whatever. But also, we push out a lot of internal apps and configurations. I'm no longer responsible for that. I give, I've given those teams that need those configurations deployed in our environment a way to do so. They have their own little namespace, they have their own little cookbook, and I just conditionally add that based on whatever they told me. So sometimes it's like all of our Android or all of our iOS developers are in this Facebook group, so they automatically get this cookbook. What happens inside that cookbook? They're, they're defining all of that. I'll help, I'll do code review, make sure that they're doing sane stuff, but realistically, I'm segmenting all of the work across the fleet to the people that know what those configurations are best because I'm not an Android developer, but they are. So they potentially would have way more context in terms of what settings should be set for, for their, the people using their tools. Now that's great. If I'm an engineer and I have an idle time of 1200, but I don't want that, how would I change that for my individual self? Well, we offer our entire code repo to anyone internal. So anyone can check out all of our chef cookbooks, look at it, understand it if they decided to, but realistically, they're not going to. Um, they want just to change this one thing. And they shouldn't have to care about the implementation of that. So what we've given them is a namespace. They can go to the CPE user customization cookbook, and all they need to do is create a recipe that matches their username, 
And we're gonna automatically include that anytime that user logs into a given machine. So in this particular case, um, let's, if my username was Mike Dodge and I logged into this machine and I wrote this recipe, I can overwrite the defaults no matter who, you know, what department I'm in, what the company default is, by the time I get to it, mine will be the last one written out to that variable and then written to the profile and generated. So I can override my screensaver timeout, they ask for password delay, I can expand uh, the manage installs uh, a list to include other applications that I like. But the best part is this will follow me from machine to machine. So each time I get a new machine, I don't have to go redo my configuration, I just get all of my settings. And if you look at that, like sure, the, the um, the expanding on managed installs is definitely a little bit like, how would you do that um, for the average user? But most of this other stuff, like the uh, screensaver idle time or the ask for password delay, that's just a key value pair. Pretty much any, any, any you know, person should be able to do that, especially if they're even remotely technical. Um, another example of this is, let's say Nate wanted to change his to something else. Uh, his idle time to 300, he gets it, but he's also including the special CPE chef dev uh, cookbook that he wrote, and they can all do that conditionally on their own. So this is my favorite part. It's like the Oprah moment. You get code, you get code. Everybody gets code. Um, it's all open sourced, and you can get it uh, here, which we'll give that, leave that up for a second. Um, we have that actual QR code and that URL goes to our init cookbook with examples and comments on how you would actually use this. Basically, you just download our entire repo. You, um, probably on a VM, because, you know, on a VM, but anyway, you can run Chef Client, tell it to do the CPE init one, and it'll, um, by default, install Monkey, configure it for you with the basic settings, uh, install a couple applications, assuming that those were in your Monkey server. Um, it sets the screensaver and Bluetooth and a whole bunch of stuff. And we are dedicated to open source all of our cookbooks going forward. Um, we plan on writing all of our code such that it's uh, generic now and we'll be able to open source much, much faster. Um, so here's some communities that we're a part of, like uh, IT Think Tank. Um, we're on the Slack for IT Think Tank. Uh, Mac Brain and the Mac Admin Slack, we're in all of those pretty much all the time, so you can reach out to us. Um, we want to help people get started with Chef, so if you run into any problems, don't feel, fr uh, don't, don't feel free to reach out to us. We'll, we'll do our best to help. Um, with all the stuff that we released, it should, get a lot, it should be a lot easier to get started, but I can imagine that there's still going to be a lot of questions. So, yeah, that's it. Any questions? I went through some of that a lot really quickly. What's up? So, um, oh, I think you need a mic. So the, uh, the, the example you gave of how managing individual launch Ds is a problem mm -hmm. was making a typo in the launch daemons yep. identifier. What if you make a typo in the CP launch D mm -hmm. uh, hash or in yep. that string? I mean, isn't that just kind of passing it downstream? No, because now, CP, I sh oh, we can go show. Um, well, if you can see it. Um, the, in the CPE launch D example, we're not managing, um, we're no longer managing individual launch demons, like I said. We're managing all of launch D. So, uh, the CPE launch D key represents everything you want on disk. If it's not in that array, and it, then it should delete it. So in the, the case where you typoed something, if you went and fixed it in this list, it will create the new one, but it'll notice that you have this old one that's not on disk that you're telling it no longer to manage, so it'll automatically delete that. So again, it's very declarative like to another level. We're no longer describing individual launch Ds. I'm describing all of launch D. So it, if it doesn't match this hash directly, it'll just clean it itself up. It's gonna completely remove all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, Clay? Did that answer your question, Ellie? Yeah. Okay. So if you're, uh, if it's removing files it doesn't see, and launch statements that you, it, it 
manages them all, how does it deal with uh, a third party software that makes a launch daemon in there? Yeah. Is it removing those, or is there other overrides to, to so, ignore those, or, or what? Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, I was going to write this like fancy receipt, a receipt store and do all this other like, you know, uh, hacky magic, but what we decided to do was actually just define a prefix for each LaunchD and profile that we care about. In this particular case, uh, it's, it's com.facebook, um, I, th I think, is the default. But you can override that for your, for your company. And now, we're not, when I say all of LaunchD, it's all of LaunchD that we care about. So it's anything that matches our prefix. Um, yeah, so no, it won't delete random third party, but anything that you've ever managed by that machine, it knows, so as soon as you stop managing that, it'll go clean it up. Same thing with profiles. All right, thanks. Yeah. Um, and then we went over it very briefly, but each of the other open, or sorry, each of the other cookbooks like Bluetooth, Screensaver, and all of those, those are just an actually a uh, a wrapper again around profiles, or at least a lot of them are. So they are dynamically generating this data structure and then shoving it into CPE profiles. But if you ever remove or update one of those values, it will recreate the profile and then lay that on disk and make sure it's loaded at any given time. Um, this makes our code uh, much easier to read. Um, we're not quite there yet, but today, in order for you to understand what a given machine is, you can just look at that machine's role or like uh, cookbook. So if I wanted to know what an engineering laptop is, I'd go look at the engineering uh, role or cookbook, and then you can see, oh, well, they have you know, X, Y, and Z, and then you can compare it against sales immediately and just understand what's the difference, and you know they get, both get the defaults, but you're no longer describing like, every little thing and every conditional logic all you know, dispersed throughout your code. It's con con uh, logic containers for each, for each one. Any other questions? Cool. Come, come grab me if you have uh, anything. Um, I definitely encourage you to check this out on your own. It's not that h hard to get started anymore. I feel like w if you go check out the cookbook that we have, we have a lot of documentation there, mostly thanks to uh, Nick McSpadden um, and Nate Walk. Um, they wrote a lot of that, so it, um, it should be pretty easy to get started now. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys.